Uh, without further ado, our first demo of the night is from Alchemy, so I'd like to call up the team. Thank you. So first of all, thank you for the opportunity. Um, we're going to be talking about enterprise automation, and I'm sure many of you uh, are working on automation initiatives. Uh, if you're in bigger enterprises, uh, this is a huge opportunity. Um, but one of the pockets that hasn't been uh, automated, that has been a real stumble, stumble block for a lot of firms, is when you have workflows that include documents. Uh, and so what we're working on uh, at Alchemy is figuring out ways to automate uh, all of those things that people do on documents. My name is Harold, I'm here with my co-founder Adam, uh, and uh, we're working on this gnarly document problem uh, to help automate what we call next-gen uh, uh, robotic process automation. Now, if you think about uh, what does an employee do uh, when they receive documents today, uh, they receive them typically in email, they might get them from content management systems, uh, they'll open it up, and of course, if the information is in the same spot all the time, it's an address or a client identifier, that's easy. But oftentimes, in business documents, when you have valuable information uh, like uh, you know, different kinds of rate tables, et cetera, they might move around. Uh, and so you, we use our human comprehension to essentially find this information and oftentimes copy-paste it into a spreadsheet or into an application to move the business process forward. And what we've seen in particularly in financial services companies that deal with lots of financial and customer data, about half the workflows slow down because they involve documents or unstructured data where you have to have this kind of workflow. So this is an exciting opportunity, uh, and it's been one that's been difficult to automate, uh, particularly those harder tasks. And that's what we work on. We are working on ways to automate those tasks and documents that require human comprehension. And of course, if you think of human comprehension on documents, there's lots of visual cues that are formatted. Before we even read anything, we use our comprehension to look at you know, key information. So for example, uh, you know, lots of tabular information is helpful when you look at numbers, uh, but that's been traditionally very difficult uh, for computers to automate processes like that. Uh, so there's lots of clues that are in these documents uh, that are visual. And the platform that we've built is one that uses both computer vision and NLP to simplify that process. We take documents in from traditional uh, flows like email, you know, we've integrated with Box and other content management platforms to make that flow through um, our platform really simple uh, and to output data so that we can bring this next-gen level of automation to our clients. Thanks, Harold. So let's take a closer look at exactly how that works. Um, for the, as Harold mentioned, we use a two-step pipeline in our system. The first step is computer vision. For this step, we took a page out of the self-driving car playbook. Uh, a lot of you are maybe familiar with how a self-driving car uh, it uses the data that it gets from its cameras to understand the scene around it. We use a, the exact same sort of machine learning model and treat the, each page in a document as an image. Uh, we place bounding boxes around every chart, table, and paragraph on the page before doing, attempting any um, NLP or, or data extraction. Then when we do move on to the data extraction and the NLP, we, we can treat each one of these independently and not get confused by tables or floating, floating uh, info boxes uh, when we're, say, uh, doing uh, named entity recognition or something on a, on a paragraph. And we also, it also provides us with additional contextual information. Where did this paragraph come from? Is it maybe in a different font or color uh, on the page that we should pay particular attention to? Um, so what does this look like in a, as in a production system? As Harold mentioned, the documents can be ingested from uh, your email inbox, other content management platforms like Box or S3, or they can live locally on your machine. And they enter our pipeline first to the computer vision stage, then to the NLP. Every prediction in our, in our pipeline comes with a confidence score so that documents that produce low confidence results can be routed to a human for review. Uh, this maintains both high quality uh, in, the, in the output as well as generates training data for, uh, for the model. The model is periodically retrained and it gets better over time. 
Great. So we'd love to show you a quick demo so you get a sense of what does it look like when you are automating and you're stopping a lot of your employees from doing these copy-paste work ta tasks that they typically don't like doing. Uh, and uh, often humans aren't very good at doing them either. So what we've done is uh, typically we like to show the system working on equity and credit research. It's a pretty uh, disparate data set that comes from many different publishers. Uh, and hopefully you get a sense. You see here Adam's uh, updating, uh, uploading a couple of um, reports. Uh, and as the data is coming into the system, what you'll see essentially is uh, that the system immediately makes the uh, probabilities uh, available and says, you know, if there are good uh, probabilities, uh, they'll be turning green. If there's are things that require the human to step into the process and complete some of the data, uh, they are uh, able to uh, open up a document. We'll go in and look at uh, one report here. Uh, this one's from UBS, and as you can see, uh, we have uh, different kinds of predictions. Uh, some are uh, NLP predictions, like uh, what's the ticker, what's the price target, what's the rating, things that traditionally have required people to open the document in order to find these pieces of information. Uh, or, uh, you know, you can extract out tabular information. Just to so you can see uh, some of the variety uh, in the system here, uh, you can see that we can also quickly add things that might be missing, uh, like if you have additional identifiers, uh, you can go in and add it. Um, if you pick a different report, uh, you'll see that uh, it, it works on uh, very well on different kinds of tabular information. And so this one formatted very differently, uh, and there's lots of uh, information here that you might require, if you're a financial analyst, uh, you might have had to go through the painful exercise of opening these documents and looking for earnings per share or other kinds of information. Uh, and here you see uh, a simple example of how all the tabular data comes out. Now, if you think about how does the enterprise actually run, uh, there is an enormous amount of information that's received from counterparties, from customers, uh, that comes into uh, your employees' email inboxes, and they then curate them into their structured data systems. We're working to make those things uh, work of the past, uh, and we're, as you can see, we're making progress. Uh, we'll tell you a couple of things. Uh, we would love to talk to you if you're an engineer that's excited about working on these kinds of applied automation challenges. Uh, and of course, if you're a customer uh, that's tired of having your employees do rote copy-paste tasks, come talk to us uh, and we'll stick around here afterwards. Thanks, John. Oh yeah, so questions. Um, can you work with handwritten documents at all? I mean, in a, say, a medical situation on the electronic records where the people are handwriting things, can you parse any of that? So the question is, uh, what about handwritten documents, uh, which of course exists uh, particularly in the medical field, and know many of you uh, probably think about you know, doctor's notes and so on. Uh, we really focused on financial services uh, documents heavily. Uh, there definitely is a category of those that are also handwritten. Uh, we could detect if there's handwriting on it using traditional technologies like OCR. Uh, and then we focused a lot on, uh, you know, extracting uh, essentially, uh, say, non-handwritten documents. Uh, that's that's been kind of the, the focus area for us so far. Uh, do your models leverage any uh, structured knowledge about how uh, documents coming from one brand, like a specific bank, for example, that you always have the same picture the same way? Would it use any knowledge like that to sort of fill in and figure out the updates? Does that make sense? Yeah, so the question was, do we use uh, additional information about documents from a, a publisher or source? Um, you know, I, I guess I'd have to say no, and we sort of see that as a strength, that um, we're not using templates, so uh, we're, we're sort of agnostic to um, how you choose to lay out the page. Um, and so, as, like, of course, you know, if you if you give us some uh, some brand new type of document that that uh, you know it, it needs to be an equity credit research report, um, but as long as it is, um, the model the the system's smart enough to know, well, uh, to not be confused by the table being on the left side as opposed to the right side. So we so we see that as a strength. Do you have a roadmap for going beyond equity reports? I saw a bunch of examples in Yeah, absolutely. Uh, it's not n not at all limited to equity and credit research. It's that's just one document type that we've we've trained the system up on, and we didn't get a chance to talk about it too much to here tonight. But 
part, a big part of the system is, is devoted to uh, enabling people to get up and running quickly on new document types and deploying automated systems and their workflows. And within financial services, we've worked on uh, use cases on I side, so for asset managers, wealth managers, the sell side for larger global banks, uh, hedge funds, et cetera. So it has a wide variety uh, of applications. We like to demo the system using equity and credit research since it's a public data set uh, that uh, is easy to show a wide variety in, but it's definitely uh, widely applicable. And of course, for many of you in healthcare, similar uh, technologies and approaches are also helpful to understand all the unstructured data that exists in healthcare, pharma, et cetera. So, so there's uh, a lot of opportunity to bring automation. Legal as well? Uh, certainly legal. I think there's a whole category of le legal tech companies, uh, you know, and, and we really see ourselves as being applied to the business, uh, not so much as uh, helping lawyers do their job. There's a whole set of companies that do that. Yeah. So, uh, so you talk about investment research. So what about the idea of privacy of the data? Or like when you spin up an instance, is it on site or do they access, do you get uploaded, uh, do these documents get uploaded to your cloud? And then what about the you know, privacy? And yeah, it's a great question. And of course, this is uh, a question for any uh, private or sensitive data uh, where you have to apply these kinds of models to it. So the question is, uh, does this have to be uploaded to the cloud? Uh, and how do we keep uh, sensitive data private, if I can sort of paraphrase it slightly? Uh, what we do is we give the clients choice. Uh, and each client's data is their own. And we don't uh, cross-train uh, models or take you know, constructs of the client's data uh, since most financial services clients uh, aren't comfortable uh, doing that. We also give clients deployment choice so they can deploy uh, in the public cloud, in the private cloud, uh, or on site behind their own firewall. One more question. Great, thank you very much.